Hey everyone, welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel. Today, we will learn about the DAX in Power BI, or also known as the Data Analysis Expressions in Power BI. That said, if these are the type of videos you'd like to watch, then hit that like and subscribe buttons and the bell icon to get notified. Craving a career upgrade? Subscribe, like, and comment below. Dive into the link in the description to fast track your ambitions. Whether you're making a switch or aiming higher, Simply Learn has your back. Just for a quick info, if you want to upskill yourself, master data analytics skills, and land your dream job, or grow in your career, then you must explore Simply Learn's cohort of various data analytics programs. Simply Learn offers postgraduate programs from Purdue University in collaboration with IBM. Through this program, you will gain knowledge and work-ready expertise in skills like prescriptive and predictive analytics, regression, classification, and over a dozen others. That's not all. You also get the opportunity to work on multiple projects and learn from industry experts in top tier product companies and academicians from top universities. After completing these courses, thousands of learners have transitioned into a data analytics role as a fresher or moved on to a higher paying job profile. If you are passionate about making your career in this field, then make sure to check out the link in the pinned comment and description box below to find a data analytics program that fits your experience and areas of interest. Now, without further delay, let's get started with data analysis expressions in Power BI. Now, when you're discussing about the data analysis expressions in Power BI, then there are a wide variety of DAGs in Power BI. So, DAGs can be assumed similar to the calculated fields and formulas that you generate in the form of a query on your data using the Power Query in Power BI. Now, let me bring that to a little simpler level. Okay, now you might be having sales data and quantity of a certain product order. Let's say you wanted to identify the cost per product then what you would do is a simple mathematical calculation which is total sale divided by number of quantities ordered of that particular product then you will get the product pricing right so similarly if you wanted to calculate some aggregate functions like sum, minimum maximum average count etc then you can use DAX and there are quite a few more other than just the aggregate functions Let's take a look through those. Firstly, we will have the aggregate DAX functions in Power BI. So, aggregate DAX functions can calculate a scalar value such as count, sum, average, minimum, maximum, etc. There are a wide variety of aggregate functions like distance, approximate distance count, average, count, max, minimum, product, sum, etc. And followed by that, we have date and time DAX functions in Power BI. So the date and time functions will help you create calculation based on dates and time. Many of the functions in DAX are similar to Excel date and time functions. However, DAX functions use date and time data type and can take values from a column as an argument. Now we have calendar, calendar auto, date, date if, date value. So most of these functions are already used in Excel and you might have a quite comfortable understanding of all these DAX functions from Excel. Now, if we move forward, we have another function, which is filter DAX function in Power BI. So the term filter function is self-explanatory. The filter and value functions in DAX are some of the most complex yet powerful and differ greatly from Excel functions. The lookup functions. So usually we used to use the VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP, XLOOKUP and index match functions for carrying out the lookup operations. These are a little different from Excel. So you can find all cross filtered, all except all no blank row, etc. and a few more, right? So these are the next category of tax functions. Moving ahead, we have the logic DAX in Power BI. So the logical functions act upon an expression to return information about the values or set of expressions. For example, you can use the if function to check the result of an expression and create conditional results. So we have and bit and bit shift bit or bit zor and a few more in this particular area. 
Now, if you move ahead, we have trigonometry, tax, enthalpy. Yes, trigonometry. You can actually use sine, cos, etc. in the DAX functions of Power BI. So here you can see the math and trigonometric functions. So we have ABS, we have A cos, A cos, H, A cot, etc. And uh, the next part of the DAX will cover time intelligence DAX functions in Power BI. So the time intelligence DAX expressions include the time intelligence functions that enable you to manipulate data using time periods including date, days, month, quarters, years, etc. And the new DAX operators in Power BI. So the DAX operators are the four different types of calculation operators that are automatic, comparison, test, concatenation and logical. So they are plus minus, star, slash and exponential. Now other than this, we also have a few DAX which are newly uploaded from Microsoft for Power BI setup. So those are right over here. So DAX is continuously being improved with functions and functionality to support features, new functions and updates that are included in service, application and tool updates within most cases are monthly. Now, for this particular tutorial, we will be focusing on the first category of DAX functions, which is the aggregate DAX functions in Power BI. So the most commonly used aggregate DAX functions in Power BI are average, count, distinct, max, minimum, product, sum, etc. Now we will just look into a practical demonstration to understand the real-time implementation of these most commonly used aggregate DAX functions in Power BI. So let's quickly shift to the Power BI desktop version. So now we have started the Power BI desktop version and here we have our data. So you can see average sales category city. So let's let me open the data set right over here. So here you can see the sales data of a uh, superstore. So we will be having the row ID, order date, order, ship date, ship mode, customer ID, etc. So this is the particular data we will be dealing with today. So I think about the power query mode so that we have a detailed understanding. So here is the Excel data that we will be using today. So we have the row ID, order ID, order date, ship date, etc. So we will be finding out, let's say maybe you wanted to find out uh, category wise average sales or category wise complete sales in a specific region, right? So we do have uh, regions over here, which is South, East, Northwest. And if you wanted to uh, extract some in insights based on a certain city, based on a certain category, let's say you wanted to extract details about uh, corporate sales happening in England region, England state, uh, or country uh, in inland state in north region right so such queries can be executed i mean to say you can filter out the data that you want to extract and explain it to power bi so that it gives you what you're looking for so that's what uh, dax is going to help you with now that we have a brief understanding of what data we are working on and what we are trying to extract let's go ahead with power bi and try to execute these insights using the tax aggregate functions so there you go we have started our power bi let's quickly load the workbook that you're working with so um, here it is just select the data and press load there you go we have the data right yeah there we have it now so we know what exactly we are going to do with DAX. So to have a better understanding how exactly DAX is working on our Power BI, let's go with the tabular type of data visualization, which is easier and simpler to understand. So I'll create a table type uh, visualization right over here. And uh, now we will have different zones, regions, right? So let's have the regions and Yes, we have the regions over here. Let's expand the table a little, little bit so that the data is visible clearly. Let's expand it to 100% or a little more. There you go. We have it. Now, let's say we wanted to find out the number of orders we receive from these zones, right? So you may have to add a new measure or to create a new 
DAX operation, you may have to click on this particular data over here. Just right click and you will have an option of add a new measure and a new DAX window is going to pop right in front of you. Now here you have it. Now let's name the measure as number of orders equals to. So let's say uh, if you wanted to find out the total number of orders from a specific region, what you would do is just count the number of orders received, right? So all you have to do is uh, call the count function and uh, data so you will be counting the number of orders so order id you will be having a unique order id for every purchase so that would be the right uh, piece of data you will be trying to count here so just, just press tab and that will be selected enter and you have a new uh, dax operation right here just select that and you will be having the number of orders received from each region right let's try to calculate the minimum orders received from a zone uh, let's say maybe from uh, okay let's try to add a new slicer or a filter onto our uh, canvas so here you can see the icon for slicer there you go yeah, you have added it now let's keep it somewhere okay let's keep it here and uh, in the fields i'll add uh, maybe category just drag and drop it in the fields now you have all the three categories uh, you have furniture office supplies and technology right now let's do let's try to calculate the minimum orders received from category now let's try to add another table you can just drag and drop it anywhere there you have it in the same way let's try to right click on data and add a new measure and this time we will name it as minimum orders received you can call the minimum function and you can call data and order id enter so here you can identify which was that uh, least performing category or least performing product and the highest performing product minimum maximum correct so now you can call category okay we can use the category over here so you can just call the region again and you can also call the minimum orders so minimum you might have to edit a little count of orders use the bracket enter okay now you will have the number or oh, you can just uh, minimum sales you can just identify minimum sales that are happening over here Press enter now you'll be having a number of sale right how many dollars of purchase has been done from a region wise perspective in furniture category and in office supplies this is the minimum orders you received and technology wise and if you just click on anywhere in the canvas I think you will have all the three there you go now uh, similarly if you wanted to create another table for maximum sales to just check out the maximum aggregate function you can do that and uh, right click on data to create a new measure and here max sales equals to max function you can just call the max function and data of sales press tab to select and enter now you can call the segment and you can call the max of sales in that particular segment right now you can also add a slicer for a slicer or a filter for your region or like we did here for category so here we can add a region wise filter and you can find out which segment has given you the maximum sales or the minimum sales and the count of uh, you know orders received and etc so far we have understood uh, the count function count aggregate function minimum aggregate function maximum aggregate function the filters and slicers used uh, maybe we can also explore the sum so basically sum is just an aggregation of total orders or total sale or anything it's just adding up all the numbers so here we have a sum aggregation as well so basically that's how we have a basic understanding of aggregate functions completely similar to excel 
So this is the basic uh, part of DAX in Power BI where you can implement all the aggregate functions, aggregate mathematical functions. And with that, we have come to an end of this session on DAX expressions in Power BI on the first part, which is aggregate DAX function. Right? And uh, if you have any queries regarding any of the topics covered in this session, or if you require the data set or the formulas of DAX that we use in this session, or apart from that, if you have any queries, please feel free to let us know in the comment section below and our team of experts will be happy to resolve all your queries at the earliest. Until next time, thank you for watching and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Staying ahead in your career requires continuous learning and upskilling. Whether you're a student aiming to learn today's top skills or a working professional looking to advance your career, we've got you covered. Explore our impressive catalog of certification programs in cutting edge domains, including data science, cloud computing, cybersecurity, AI, machine learning, or digital marketing. Designed in collaboration with leading universities and top corporations, and delivered by industry experts, choose any of our programs and set yourself on the path to career success. Click the link in the description to know more. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.